Hello everyone, Lizelle Crowley here from the Cool Tool Studio. Today's project is a wonderful hollow bead. This bead is very sculptural. It's formed over wood clay. You form the, um, the silver clay over the wood clay and then you add different elements using different textures, coils, syringe, and little balls. I love making these projects. It's one of my favorite hollow form projects. Easy 960 is the clay we're going to use for this and it's a fantastic clay for this project because it's nice and strong. You don't have to worry about strength issues in the fired piece. Let's get started. So the first step in making this hollow bead is to create a core out of a combustible material that will burn away. And what we're going to use today is this wood clay. Now these are a couple that I've already made and dried. And I just want to point something out to you. Um, there's some deep cracks in this uh, and you can see them here. Now these are not going to be a big issue in the project we're doing today, but for some projects where you would want a really smooth surface that might be an issue. These were dried in the dehydrator and I feel like the quicker drying in the dehydrator is what caused these cracks. This one here uh, was not dried in the dehydrator and it's a much smoother surface. The other thing is once they're dried you can also sand them to get them smooth. Uh, it's a step that I don't do in this particular project because again I don't really need it to be super smooth but if you are doing a project where you need a super smooth surface you can make the piece dry it and then sand it and get it nice and smooth. So let me show you it's very simple how to make one of these. Now this clay, once it's dried, is no good. You can't reconstitute it. So you want to seal it up nicely. And you just pinch off a piece. And you can see it's, it's very much um, like cork clay. They don't really make cork clay anymore, but it works about the same. It's very malleable. And all I do really is pinch off a piece about the size I want and roll a ball. And uh, this is a little big for me, so I'll just pinch off a little bit more. Now, I'm making round shapes, but you can make any shape you want. Now, it's important for this clay to dry at least 24 hours if you're air drying, and at least 6 hours if you're drying in a dehydrator. It has to be completely dry um, before you use it with the metal clay, because if it is not completely dry, what will happen is it will release steam in the firing and that can burst through your metal clay and cause problems. So there you go. You just make a little ball, you dry it, and then the next step I'll show you how to form the bead over the wood clay. So now I'm going to show you how to cover the wood clay core with metal clay. And the first thing I'm going to do is roll out a sheet of clay four cards thick. And I like to go relatively thick because as you form the metal clay around the wood clay core, sometimes you're pressing it and you don't want it to thin out too much. Easy 960 is a fantastic clay for any hollow form project because of the fired strength. You don't have to worry about it collapsing or any issues with strength and structure. So here I have my nice smooth sheet of metal clay. And I'm just going to lightly moisten the cork clay. Now, if you prefer, you can um, embed a toothpick or something in the cork clay to hold it while you're forming the clay around it. I actually prefer to just do it in my hands. The by I'm sorry, I, I apologize. I'm saying cork clay because I'm used to working with cork clay, but in this case, it's wood clay. Um, I like to just completely wrap it and then pinch off the excess. And then just smooth it. 
The reason, this does not have to be perfect because you're going to be embellishing this with little sculptures, coils, syringe. You can do whatever you want once you form the clay. You can add texture to it if you'd like. Let me get my excess clay away so it doesn't dry out. And I like to just roll it around. So before I put it in the dehydrator, I'm just going to um, poke my holes. And you want your hole size to be relative to what you're going to hang your bead on. Um, I typically do either a, a, a cord or a thin chain. But if you wanted a thicker chain, of course, you would make a larger hole. And Cool Tools has these great little hole punches. So I'm just going to come in and punch one side out. You can see that. And then I'm going to punch the other side out. And I just sort of eyeball. And there's that one. Now, once I've embellished the bead, I can put a little syringe um, reinforcement around that hole to make it look more finished. And that will all happen after the bead is dried and embellished. So here I have the metal clay bead. It's been dried. And I've lightly sanded it just to get rid of any um, really glaring cracks or lumps, but there, it really did not need a lot of sanding. Um, you can either hold the bead in your hand or you can impale it on a toothpick to use as a handle. So I'm going to do that. The, what I'm going to do at this point is embellish the bead. And I like to use natural elements when I embellish my bead. You can use any texture, you can use syringe, you can use little balls of clay, but I prefer natural elements. And Cool Tools has a great line of textures that are perfect for this. So before we get started, we want to dampen the clay. And Cool Tools has this great new little tool. It's called the Wick Away. And what's great about it is you can dip your brush in the water, but then you can dab it on the sponge so it's just damp rather than um, completely wet. And this is better than using paper towel because you can always reclaim any of the silver that gets in here by wetting the sponge and squeezing it out. So I'm going to start with a damp brush and just dampen my bead. And see, this is the perfect consistency for what I need to do. Okay. And now I'm going to start by rolling out some texture. I'm going to start by going four cards thick. And I'm just using a small amount of clay because I'm going to do each of these little embellishments individually. I don't want a big sheet of clay that's going to be drying out on me. And I'm going to go ahead and start with this texture here and roll the clay out two cards thick. And there I have that sweet little leaf. I'm going to come in with my clay pick and just hand cut it. And I'm not worried about being perfect. Um, I want my beads, I like my beads to be somewhat organic looking. I'm going to just re-moisten my bead. And then I'll pick up my piece with the brush. And I'll just lay it on the bead. And then I'll just lightly press that down. And I've started building my design. So I'm going to go ahead and do some more embellishing. One of the things I love in my studio is a tool that can do multiple things. I have this magnesium soldering brick and it's great for soldering, annealing, balling up wire, and it also makes a great stand for my bead as I work on it. Now you can see my bead is pretty much done. I've got some leaves on it. I've got a little flower and leaves and I've added a few coils. I just want to show you um, how I also can add a little bit of syringe for decoration and some tiny little balls and that'll be ready to dry and uh, sand. So first I'm going to get a syringe and again I'm using the um, 
wick away to just dampen the area where I'm going to put my syringe. And I'm also going to use the wick away to dab my syringe on because when you pull your syringe out of the water, it has a lot of water dripping off of it. And you don't really want that water dripping onto your design. The proper way to hold the syringe is to hold it in your hand and press on the plunger with your thumb. This will give you the greatest amount of control. And you want to start squeezing and let it lay down on your surface. You don't want it to uh, mush down on your surface. Mush is a technical term. And the syringe gives you a lot of um, fluid motion. You can get fluid motion with the coils also, but the syringe is just, just a little bit more fluid. It does come out of the syringe, the clay comes out of the syringe a little bit soft, so you will want to go back after it's dried a little bit and just press lightly with your finger. Um, make sure you lube your finger and press very lightly just to make sure you have good contact between the syringe and the um, clay. The other thing you can do is take a damp brush and you can also adjust the syringe line if you're not happy with it. You can sort of move it, which I'm going to do with this one. Just give it a little more curve in here. And that it gives you a lot more versatility with the syringe line. The last thing I'm going to do is add some tiny little balls of clay. And I'll add one or two and then um, you can see the rest later in the finished bead. Now, when you're making little balls of clay, also you want just very small amounts. One of the things I find with my students is their balls are often too large for the piece and it makes it harder for them to stay on post-firing if they're too large. So I'm going to dampen the area where I want to put the balls. I like to try to pick it up with the brush. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. There we go. And just lay it down. and you can nudge it around with the brush. Whenever I've got wet clay, I prefer to not touch it with my hands because it gets my hands dirty. And it's a waste of clay. So there you see two little balls. I'll probably add a few more and I'll show you the finished piece when we're done. So here I have finished embellishing my bead and the final step is to um, strengthen around where I've drilled my holes or poked my holes. Now on the top hole I'm fine because I um, put a coil around it, but on the bottom hole right where the toothpick is I'm just going to use a little syringe and again I'm going to use the wick away to dry off my tip and I'm just going to lay a line of syringe right around the toothpick there and that will outline my hole and give it a nice finished look. And once I get that on there I'm going to come in with my damp brush and just pat that down. Okay, and that's ready to go in the dehydrator and be dried. I'll do a final light sanding and then it'll be fired. So here we have the finished bead. You can see that it's been fired. It's very, very strong. Um, I've added a patina and cleaned away the patina from the raised areas. It's a lovely, lovely piece. Have fun trying these at home. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.